Let's talk about the observer design for discrete time systems. It's the same logic. The reason that we want these kind of observer designs is because the full state feedback is not available and full state feedback is really powerful. Now, the second motivation is actually usually observers are implemented in the discrete time domain. Why don't we uh, just design everything from the discrete time domain? Then there are some interesting differences that will appear. It turns out the discrete time observer will have two routes, two design principles. The first is the same as the continuous time Luenberg observer. This basic form is uh, the structure, the property is almost the same as the continuous time Luenberg observer. However, Actually, in the common filter design, it uses a different mechanism. The more general discrete time observer design is actually implementing this so-called predict and correct type of form. Okay? It uh, is designed directly in discrete time domain and it leverages some signal properties in the discrete time. Let's see what it is and what kind of benefits it's going to introduce. Let's start with the discrete time Luenberg observer, which is very similar to the continuous time case. We have this, right? A copy of the state dynamics plus L times the difference between the actual output Y minus an estimated output Y, which equals C times X hat. And then the output equation is y equals cx. This is the state equation. This is the observer state equation. The same type of analysis can be applied if we look at the arrow, which is um, x minus x hat again. Then we can derive and arrive at the same type of arrow dynamics. E k plus 1 equals a minus LC times EK. And we can uh, analyze the augmented system as well and see that uh, the overall dynamics also has this very nice separation of eigenvalues. We can arbitrarily place the eigenvalues of the observer as well. We can choose L such that the eigenvalues of this can be anywhere that we want in the uh, complex plane. The only difference is we want to place the eigenvalue of this one to be where? Inside the unit circle instead of on the right half plane. Okay? So we have the powerful fact. The aerodynamics can be arbitrarily assigned if the system is observable. In other words, the observer can be made arbitrarily accurate to estimate the state, right? If E is zero, that means X hat is going to be equal to X. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper into this and think about what can we do more. We know that uh, this is the state estimation equation. It's the same as the Luenberg observer. However, if we think about the indices, this index, k plus 1, means that we are calculating this state estimate at time k plus 1. Now, at time k plus 1, you can see that this is using a previous measured output. It's only using yk. However, when we are at time k plus 1, we already have a new measurement of the output. Right? So, uh, the pioneers of uh, modern control theory thought about this. How can we use this more recent measurement, which intuitively should give us better results, right? And then the solution is as follows. The so-called discrete time observer with a predictor form, with predictor and corrector form, is as follows. We still do a prediction step, which is essentially using a copy of the system state equation. We say uh, we use everything that we have at k and we do an estimate of x hat at k plus 1. 
right? So the notation is as follows. X hat KK means the estimate of XK based on everything that I can have up to time K. And X hat K slash K minus one is the estimate based on the measurements up to the previous time, k minus 1. The estimation error is defined ek to be xk minus x hat kk. So the predictor is just trying its best to do, is the open loop type of prediction. It uses everything that I can have at time k, and then the corrector step is going to do this is going to improve my predicted state. But leveraging this updated measurement that I can have at k plus 1. So that's the logic behind it. Let's take a look at now the aerodynamics. Consider the difference between x k plus 1 and x hat k plus 1 my best estimate that I can have using everything up to k plus 1 is as follows. So we have, um, let's combine, let's, let's look at this one first. The x hat k plus 1 using everything at k plus 1 equals this plus this. So we can combine this term and uh, this term over here to have i, so we have a common term x hat k plus 1 given k, we have i minus l times c as the new matrix in front of this estimate, and then plus l times y k plus 1. Let us now introduce this predictive equation into here. Let's replace x k plus 1, x hat k plus 1 given k, with something about x hat k given k. So bring this into here, we will have a x hat k k given k, right? And then we will have a BU term. This is from the predictor. This whole matrix comes from, this is a scaling factor in the previous equation. So the whole x hat gets multiplied with this matrix. So uh, that's why it's I minus LC times BU. We have the state equation Subtract 1 with 2. Then we will have, on the left-hand side, we're going to have x k plus 1, which is the arrow term, minus this one. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to have this term minus this term. And then it's going to equal to just a sum manipulation. We will have, in the end, something very simple. Let's take a look at this uh, in slightly more details. We have A minus LCA is the new observer aerodynamics. If you treat this CA together as C tilde, then A minus LC tilde is the closed loop observer closed loop A matrix. This can be made the eigenvalues of this matrix can be made arbitrary in the complex plane if A and C tilde, they define an observable pair. In other words, if A and uh, C A define a rank N observability matrix. This condition is actually not difficult to satisfy. That's the uh, main message. Because if we take a look at this uh, observable 
observability matrix defined by C tilde and A. We write the same structure over here, and we plug in C tilde equals C A into here, then we can have this result. We can factor out A on the right-hand side, because C tilde is going to have an A term. So they have a common term about A on the right-hand side, and then the rest turns out to be the same observability matrix for the original system. So on the paper, the condition is that uh, uh, if CA is defining an observable pair, then this QD will have a rank N. And if A is invertible, then the rank between this Q tilde and this Q will be the same. In other words, if A and C is observable, if this QD is a rank N and A is non-singular, then this new observer with predictor type of design will be observable and we can place eigenvalues arbitrarily. This condition that uh, the A has to be invertible, this is not guaranteed for a continuous time system. Right? If you think about x dot equals ax plus bu, the A matrix in the continuous time system is not guaranteed to be having uh, to be non-singular. However, this if we have a continuous time A matrix and then we discretize it, we talked about how to discretize a state equation. Right? The discretized state equation AD, if you have A in the continuous time system and you discretize it and becomes E A sampling time delta T. If you discretize a continuous time state equation, then this discrete time A matrix is guaranteed to be invertible. The eigenvalues of the discrete time system is going to be E times the lambda of the eigenvalue of A and delta T, which is always uh, non-zero. So, in other words, we have the good news still. If we do this observer with predictor and corrector type of design, usually we will have we will be able to place the eigenvalues the way we want.